all this mess? Where are we going to start? Let's see. And now, we went out driving in the in Tinajay. We did the powder coating. We got the Mondale loaded up with the goodies. For the later motor scope, going to be finished in a lovely shade of red. Purist, beware. No, why are you doing it in yellow? Because I'm going to get another one. You got one in yellow, isn't it? For now, it's tube out. Wow, tube out. Because let's, let's strip this bad boy down. Woo! Okay. 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 than it looks. Take a look at the Dynavision. Coming right at you. That's a lightweight piece of kit. Just one bolt. You can see if you do your googling, okay, you do your googling and you'll find these were mounted this way round with the bracket at the bottom on top of the machine in on the 60s ones and you could like twist this round and angle it at the, uh, the mechanic. What a great piece of kit. That's the tube all on one and the multi-plug. So that's the first bit out, but we've got to re-powder coat that cone, the red bit. Probably buff up the aluminium, and that'll be it. So we've got to take that the back off it, and we'll need to get this carefully wrapped. Hold on two seconds, I'm going to get a still shot for the thumbnail. Be right back. I wish I could have the radio on. That power cable there. Well, that's got to be re-done anyway, so I'm disconnecting that. Don't need that. Electronic box out, cables there, and get to this, unplug that, it's that out, the family silver, silver spoon, that's out, we've got to strip that casing down, so that's another piece to do. Wow, 10p, ooh, what year we got? Right, so, it's two shillings, so another prize someone guesses the year, this two shilling. Who's going to guess the year? Two shilling piece. It's within the, the build spec of this. Not far, well, not far. A couple of years out. Come on. Guessing? The year of the coin? Who's going to get it? 1966 shilling in there. Draw. Put some of these screws on the draw there. Okay, the hard bit on this is going to be this roller shutter. I don't know how that's going to power coat this Venetian blind effect. We can get this unbolted from the top section. Before I do that, it's all gauges off. I'll not film absolutely everything. I'll film it in the strip down stages. Notice on the battery power, we're running low because I'll get the camera charged up. So I'll go and get the camera charged up. I'll be stripping a few things while you're charging up. So when you come back, a few more bits will be off. We'll see you in a sec. Rivets out for getting these little tags off. Couldn't even do it one-handed, but you get the idea. Wiring coming out, modules coming out. Here we've got to get these dials and knobs off here at the front. These are seized on, so we've got to use a bit of uh, persuasion. And then these instruments will drop out backwards. I think these come out front ways. Switches off at the back. Again, these knobs are going to be fun to pull. But we're going to have to try it. We're going to have to free it up. Side panel off. Part of those instruments out at the back. Power pack unit out at the back. Not much to it, to be fair. I'm not gonna admit, once you take out these two modules here, it's actually you just <laughs> you pretty quickly to just a metal case. So in terms of getting the electronics out, not a great deal. Some fuse holders here, power socket at the side, but that's about it. I'm just going to go back and uh, charge up. By the time that charges up, we should be well on our way. Krypton motor scope. 1962 model. Last, just stripped off these the knobs there now. You've just got to take the centre caps out of them. They're on a, a brass bushing, a little bit of penetrating fluid, a light tap really carefully 
luckily most of them came off with no problems so back up there they're all the same this instrument will be brought there it goes come around to the back crossing your screen this instrument out so that's that one as one module one unit which will have to be substrate that face plate's okay we could argue that we do the regalvanize that chassis the whole chassis we'll have to look what's in it all oh, fair old bits of parts in there what a whole new minefield just opened up wow oh my god oh there's a wax cap that's already dead it's melted we got wax cap alerts Ugh, that's knackered that wax cap sure we got ourselves we've got ourselves some recapping to do that's a sub module so we'll take it as we remember how we break stuff down bite-sized chunks we'll get a cap capacitor list going that's a separate completely separate project these whoa yes a blood blown cap all destroyed look Woo -hoo -hoo. so that module needs some help but it's, it doesn't need what we, we won't do anything what we'll do we'll get it working I'm not going to take that off its chassis we're going to leave that chassis like this we're not going to go that far I'll check all those valve sockets there loads of valves in this wow a whole separate module folks and the best we're going to be able to do to this one is recap check the resistors in fact to be fair they're the only parts that are really in it looks like the instrument itself I know the deflection works on that gauge anyway that's a separate unit we won't get confused that goes to one side that's not part of what we're doing today hold on let's just reiterate that that's not part of what we're doing today Dynavision Mac get to the chopper Mac Dylan Dylan sorry that's had me that's had me arnie moment sorry I don't care if you think I'm crazy I need to have my arnie moments it's the only thing in this crazy world that's keeping me sane now then what else we've got here this one's ready to go to loosen them up another plate here to come off that one out very easy to strip down just give you a running commentary superb nothing seized yet i say these knobs were a little bit naughty they went in the end they've got a little brass insert in them they went in the end put that to one side get to the chopper there we go there's another panel there's another piece of metal into our collection it's all stacking up i'll show you what we've got so far right behind you off screen now another instrument let's move you now whereabouts are you can you see my hand moving because i can't see a thing right it looks like two screws here on this one this instrument should come out backwards again I have to get ready to catch this one. Yeah, it's going to come out as a whole another subunit. Let's see if there's any knackered capacitors or resistors or valves blown from this one. Here we go, that wasn't seized. This should withdraw unless we've got to undo these. No, we have to undo those bolts on the pots. That's good. Submodule again designed to be serviced, designed for Krypton engineers to swap out on site most likely. That's why it's all modular. So your field tech would come in if you had a fault with this he'd just swap that out let's come and say hello to the camera pc is here to greet you to keep you warm on this friday night okay so this module then everybody okay deflection gauge stuck but we'll get that now then what's underneath i've never seen it hang on let's lock these clips on that's going to come out that instrument we don't want that hold on just has these little spring clips that hold it in I mistakenly undid those thinking that that was one of the fixing systems to get it out it wasn't there we go these just snap in here we go right back in oh here we go what we got oh, a bit clean on this side what we got two free electrolytics there a couple of resistors no valves on this although there's a is that some kind of rectifier i think it is some kind of crazy rectifier here 
I think that's an old school bridge rectifier, I think. Supplying DC current. Pretty simple, that'll be an easy one. That'll be an easy repair. Some fine tuning pots perhaps there. Little wire wound pots to get it calibrated. A nightmare to calibrate. What's this? Oh, this is a valve of some description. What the hell? What the hell? Oh, the cover's coming off. Whoa, it's a relay. It's a relay, all right. What the hell are you? Is it a relay? Looks like it. It's the weirdest relay I've ever seen. You have a look. Looks like a relay to me. Could be seized. That should open and close contacts. Wow, that's a weird relay. That's very strange. It's a very interesting component there, everybody. If you feast your eyes on that, I'll leave it in front of the camera for a sec. I'm intriguing. I love stuff like this. Right, little cover back on it. Again, this is a sub-module, so we're not going to concern ourselves too much with this. The chassis is rusty, yes. Pete's going to be putting it back in rusty. Um, you could really go the whole hog and completely take this to bits, but, you know, and get that plate regalvanized. That would be nice. Anyway, for now, off camera for you. It's another module, so that leaves us with... The top plate to come off, it should come off quite easy. I'm going to tilt you up a little bit, hold on, left to right for you, and now flick the switch and up we go, just a touch. So you can see this come off, there should be some lamps inside this, because this has lovely little incandescent bulbs that light the gauges up, they'll be on the harness, so I'll we'll have to disconnect the harness, screw, any more screws, he has two at the front. Oh, got that, got that, got your number. Whoa! The bulbs are there. That's a separate piece. So that's the Motoscope logo. Can you see? Scrolling from left to right for you. That goes into parts panel now. Parts panel building up nicely. Whoa! It's flipped it upside down. There's some bulbs. These look like the brackets of spot. Well, now you've got a collar here. Baker like collar. It's probably going to break when I try and unscrew that. Two bulbs. Hopefully we can still get these. Oh, just there's two lamps. Sound off like you've got a pair. Sound off like you've got a pair. Okay. Two bulbs. What else we got? Removable. Ah, the Perspex windows. Lovely little. Perspex windows that we could have remade to make the, the lamp shine lovely and bright through there. Are they held on with flat heads? Yes, they are. So I can go underneath and get these. This piece of Perspex is cracked. You can already see it. So these will be recut. It's a, it's a kind of semi-opaque Perspex there. They have to take off. What about this panel? Will this go? Whoa! Straight off. Right, so very thin aluminium, and that's it's got to be re replicated. So we're going to get one of these made, all one piece, a very thin. Well, you could do that in vinyl. There's no necessary reason it has to be on the aluminium plate. So I'm going to show that to our friend who's watching. We've been emailing each other. I didn't know if I could name you or not, in case you want to be discreet, but. So, and shout out in the box now. Okay, that's good. Right, that's a separate department. That's not going with the, the power coating. It's off screen, sorry. Well, that's good, that should, be, that should be good. Right, that takes us to there. Right, so we've got 240 AC mains decal to make. That won't come off, we'll have to photograph that. Two pieces of perspex. And the troublesome thing is going to be, although you can easily rebuy these, these bayonet holders will not want to unscrew, I wouldn't have thought, um, without cracking. Notorious for um, cracking is this stuff, doubly wired at the back. So you'd be lucky to get them off. I think what I'm tempted to do, well, I'll have a go. Uh, may as well stay on for this, watch Pete struggle again. I'm going to move the tripod back, you're going to 
slightly move a little bit. Camera might try and track me, don't know. Pants are falling down. Get some pliers. Tell you what, we might be into a few hours by now. I don't know how much footage. I've completely lost track of the footage this time. I can't see this go without it breaking it. It's just going to crack. I mean, I'm, I'm hardly putting any pressure on this. Thought he had something to go there. These will just disintegrate. There are two locating tags. Not going to have it. Mm. Tell you what, try this. A long shot, but you never know. Wrap that round. Try and just. Be nice to say, I suppose. It's so brittle, this stuff. trying to just get some tension and then I'm going to try and pull it round. Oh, it's well stuck. I'll get that cap off that side, but it won't get us out of the water. So that cap's okay. Let's try again. Struggle at home with PT. Trying not to break a vein. It's, can you still see what I'm doing? Let's get you in a bit better. Bit my stupid back all the time. There we go. I'll start you back in the middle. There, yes. Okay, let's try. Okay, that round. Whoops, wrong way. This way. Theory is good. This theory of undoing this is, is good. It's probably won't do anything, you never know. We're on the right lines to do to undo this. This technique isn't Are you dreaming? Are you dreaming, lad? Uh, hang on a minute, lads. I've got a great idea. This might work. Oh, yeah. Hang on a minute, lads. i got a great idea. Now, everybody, slowly. Come to the back. Slowly. Now, nobody, and don't have any move either, or we'll all be out. We'll be gone. We don't have any move neither. Oh, we're all gone. Right, we've got a, we've got some cables in the way. I'm tempted to just cut, just so that we're ahead of the game. Although, hang on a second, we see we're out here. We've got OCD, OCD kicking in. Yeah, OCD's kicked in. Can't handle it. Couldn't cope. Could not cope with, with cutting cables. We're doing it right. If you're gonna do it, do it right. Baby, do it with me. If you're gonna do it, do it right. Right. Goodbye, cables. Go 
from it. What tea? There we go. There we go. And then break it as it comes out. Come on. Oh, I just didn't want to go, did it? Way! Okay. Cover that cap up. What happened to me ring? Where's my ring? It has to be ring piece. Screw that on there. We have salvaged the original Bakelite holder. No damage. Right, put it low level. Do not let it get on a height. I'll fit with the dials there. Okay, can we do the second one? We're about to see if I move you around a little bit more, then we're going to bring you. My hand shows the middle, we're going to bring you up a touch. Okay. Can't zoom you in, this camera doesn't have that facility. Uh, right. Watch people fail again. Oh, it didn't fail, did it? Okay. This could, this could go wrong. So, who knows? Whoops! I won't get that before it disappeared. A little, one of the little chrome screws, you never get another one of them, don't be losing those. Put them in the magnetic tray holder. See hey, what's just got trouble written all over it, hasn't it? This has got brake written all over it. This has got Pete wreck it written all over it. Oh, I Okay, Tina G is in the shop for an o service and overhaul. It's been in long-term storage. Out she comes for a checkup and some work. I'm just checking. Everything's holding up well. We've still got a nice solid boot. No signs of any water getting in or damp. It's been dry stored anyway, but you just uh, like to check. It was a new boot floor quite a long time ago now time passes as i said i've owned this 30 years done stuff over it on it over the years today's job was the half shaft bearing that had gone where it was wobbling there was some play in it richard picked that up so i had a spare half shaft this one needs to have the bearing pressed on split the collar here just cold chisel it drill a hole cold chisel it split it that one's pressing on but i've got a, a good working axle half shaft so i've just refitted and tested that going to refurb and put new brake shoes on the back so i'm just cleaning down the brake parts richard's coming down to give us a hand interior stayed clean over the years seats were retrimmed a long time ago but they did a, a very nice job same trimmer that did all the other stuff he's been going that long 20 odd years not really anything to do inside a couple of little touch-ups a bulb on the dash out back seat once Retrim on the there the original seats. It's got a, a split in it, the sun heat strip. Uh, Bodywork wise, uh, these inner and outer sills went on it in '93, I think. Still holding out a little bit of rust has crept under that lip of the A pillar. They are full of wax oil. I'll probably just sand that back, and we'll probably put some paint on this and touch it in. Engine bay needs some work. Really, we need to take the engine out and, re and detail the bay. In the days when I did this, in, 90s, in the 90s, I wasn't into detailing the same way as I am these days. And uh, we've had a few problems. Brake master cylinder burst seal and absolutely doused the engine bay in brake fluid. Consequently, I took the paint off so it's got primer around that damaged area. It's been like that for a while. I never really had this as a big time show car it did a lot of shows but it was i never had it detailed to the level that i like to do these days so i would like to take this out and detail this bay uh, it is solid though the lower jacking points the lower, lower anti-roll bar bracket points them chassis legs on the inners absolutely rock solid it's had a new lower valance the rest of it's probably original i think i did some a wing on it both wings were new Ford wings, uh, or at least they were good copies, can't remember, but again that was in the 90s. It's had two paint jobs, one in Onyx and one in Fern. The Fern paint job was done in 2010, I think. So that's 10 years, 11 years on this now, coming up. 
and that's held out quite well still a good finish on the paint little bits like this can you see just in the corner there you get a little bit of rust trying to creep in it is quite well sealed it's nothing really bad that um i've opened this side boot floor as i said survived this was a new quarter on this side there's a scratch there it's been on it for a bit that was a whole new quarter because that quarter was knackered it was dented a jcb ran into that took that quarter out in 97 i think that happened a new quarter went on i think it was the first time i'd fitted a quarter it's held out quite nice that repair was in and sealed nothing's crept underneath that quarter so that's nice and solid you haven't got any repair pieces in it because it's replaced boot floor went in again i don't know when that was end of the 90s whole new boot floor drilled all the spot welds and pulled the old boot floor out that upper scuttle air intake is original and completely rot free this quarter wing was okay but it had gone round the lip so that's got a grafted in a joggled in arch liner which i suppose you could see and i think i don't know if that's a scratch or that is only a scratch i thought that might have been a fill line cracking but it's not i don't think it is i think that's just a scratch across there so that repair there I'd expect that to really try and have a go at coming back at some point um where it was as a join there where that's joggled in so far it's held out a little bit of um like a vein spreading underneath there look and then here this is always a problem this is gonna have to get worked can you see where the bolts that hold the seed pillar in and you see a lot of them start there and indeed this has crept under the paint look so we'd have to take off the seed pillar trim vinyl roof really wants swapping out because it's got when the when they sanded this i think they sanded through on that line again i wasn't sharp enough to spot things like that then and consequently i can feel that rust has gone on it wouldn't have got through the skin or anything it has a habit of sort of bubbling up underneath and making these indentations in the vinyl i've had that happen on swampy as well in, in the corner there I managed to get that sorted out luckily um it's not the glue it is it will be rust on that where they've sanded that for the glue and then you know let all the last car all the cars have done since i've told them make sure you don't bear metal through now do you know some of them when i've pulled vinyl roofs off scrappers it is bare metal with a glue on top and the vinyl roof guy said to me he said well that's how we got, used to get them in i said yeah well that's why they always rusted a lot of the time you get a vinyl roof and it's rotted because of the way that's been prepped so that was a mistake really there it's a minor detail and uh, a vinyl roof well it's probably 500 quid to get it sorted out if you really wanted to go to town and i i wouldn't like to live with that for much longer it hasn't got any worse because it's been dry stored scuttles are good scuttle ends are good Scott lens are filler free. I think they're original too. How the hell that got away with it? I don't, I don't think they were never rotten. It just never, it just wanted, and I blasted them anyway. I think the wax soiling that I did in the 90s has helped because I think we put, I think we put about five litres in this. I've got a photograph of me somewhere just gunning it in with a, a red hot heater and it was, it was really did pouring and it was wax oil which I now used Dinitrol or, or built hammer, hamber rather than wax oil i think it's the, the sort of dinner trolls i think it's better stuff so you learn as you go along i'd like to, to uh, ceramic coat that exhaust header smarten up the uh, air filter this is a slight this is more royal blue that's not a 5010 rail coat on that so i'd probably repowder coat that and then detail the engine get it repainted change that master cylinder that's a land rover one we put back to a proper mark three one though they're all right to be fair they're quite good uh, if you get stuck you can use land rover master cylinders i think it's a series two land rover master cylinder might be wrong you have to change the fittings this was done quite quick because it went on the grand tour and this blue had blown before the car was getting used on grand tour and we had to quickly do that which is why the pipes are just bent i had like a, a night to do it to get it 
to get it on the schedule that we were doing. So that's terrible. Those pipes need to be all properly shaped back in and all tidied up. Take off the servo, strip it down, shot blast it, and uh, repaint that two-pack paint back that uh, master cylinder vac servo. Rewrap the engine bay. It's in black tape again. 90s. Um, you know, I just wasn't looking at it with those eyes. But it's been a daily driver for a long time. It was a daily driver for me for oh, at least, well, 20 years, you know, off and on. And then as I've done the other cars, this became less used. And then it was stored for quite a long time in a warm, dry unit, which has saved it from rotting. It was never left outside. The only time this has ever been left outside is if something was in the way and there was no choice, but even then it was dried down. So it's been looked after by me a great part of my life, you know, and it is part of me. So strictly speaking, we should strip it completely, dip it, repaint it and do it to concourse. Really, that's what we should do. And perhaps that might may well happen. We'll have to see. But for now, we've got to use it for something. So we're going to get these brakes cleaned, refurbished and fitted. Check the pads at the front, clean down a little bit. I'll show you what has happened in storage. Which reminds me, the fuel lines all want swapping, they'll have cracked. But what has gone in storage, and these were new hoses, although again, late 90s, but look at that uh, weep in there, that uh, hose, and that's it's not, you know, it's not original Ford hose, but just goes to show when you leave them stood, pipes start to break down. So, so a little bit of work on this while we also do the Kryptons. Krypton then getting put back together, waiting for some rubber matting, waiting for some dolly casters but uh, the booms all assembled these decals going on there now boom on and operational you can move that it's not got any weight it won't move but it will move swivels around it's a nice snug fit to be fair in red then next one we do we will do it in yellow for the purists but um like it like that for this workshop you can see it's going to blend in so that's good so i shall carry on a zip tie. I shall carry on working on this car. Oh, man, that door, I'd like to, to pull that in. It was never right, that. Always stuck out. And little bits and pieces, you know. But overall, it's held out nice. Dry storage and wax all saved this car. Could be coming rough. Bulkhead's all good. Behind the heater box is all good. Floor pans are all good. Inner sills have been replaced. Floor pan's got a patch in it from years ago. We can lift all the carpets and have a look. But this is what you could do. You could go to town on it, strip it all and uh, dip the shell and start again. Or at least shot blast the shell and do what, what we did if you really wanted to. I could just carry on daily driving it till, uh, till the end, I suppose. <laughs> Seems a bit weird saying that, doesn't it? But it's there. It's Tina G. It's part of me. It's a Mark III. Right, I'm going to carry on clean up these brake pits. Catch you in a sec, let me see. Just carrying on this inspection, dust down and clean down. Boot floor, dry and solid and good. It's took a hit over the years, loading stuff in and out. It's held out nice. I just took the bungs off the end of the sill plug. I wanted to see how the wax oil had held out all those years. It can do a... Hang on, let's get this on. You can do a, uh, a memory card on this camera, but I've got the camera inside the sill. And we're looking to see if it's dry and rust free. You can see the seatbelt bolt there. You can see the old yellowy coloured wax oil clean metal. I'm not seeing rust. Go a bit further in. Very dry, ready for another coating, I reckon. Nothing's rotten in there. Up to the top, sort of got a, a surface rust on it now. Well known for, hold on, I'll repower that up. Well known for um, condensating in these sections. 
get that on again just clean the end of the lens in we go so the top edge of the inner sill there that's all look good the outer sill is pretty good to be fair there's no rust coming back so keeping it dry and then that on it means it's just ready for another blast through of uh, Ginitrol but it's not uh, got any signs of, of rust, rust coming through you can tell that anyway nothing's creeping through all proper in and out of sills proper flawed ones on it no filler in them so that's good hopefully this side will be the same we'll stick the camera in when we get the wheel off this side make sure them just blast the hell out of it with more dinner troll very important to get your dinner troll down here as well where that moisture traps right down there condensates inside your boot dribbles down the inside collects rots out the inner big weak point on gxl's those bolts there let water into the boot and rust the paint you have to use a rubber bung type if you've got them here it stops the water getting in compressible rubber washer on your trim fittings as you probably know a lot of people um, don't know it then watch the video then say they did know it but they've really watched the video you can't fool me I know I know that trick uh, what else I think there's a few other things the hoses we've got the hoses I think there's something else get uh, some hoses cut to length get these off Richard's coming in a minute to give us a hand that's Richard Valentino yeah I've got the plugs in all the hoses were knackered, they've all been swapped. New 50-50 mix of antifreeze, new alternator belts, doing a colour tune on it with the Gunsons. All them tubes are gone in storage, funny how them pipes just set. Richard Valentini is on the back end. He's actually made it onto YouTube, as Mr Valentini himself has made it on. He's just done our back brakes in record time. So we are ready to do a colour tune, an oil drop. <laughs> Richard just finished work at five and he's back on my cars. Oh my God. Right, we just have to repay him. Fire the engine up, see what we do, uh, see what the colour tune's like, and then get the air bled out of the heat and matrix, check for tools, dropping down, my usual mistake. Points, probably, will need some attention, we'll have a look. Tick over up just a little bit. That was running on the auto choke. Tick over. Sounds quiet. That ticking you can hear is the PCV valve. They always tick. I get the flat blade and just knock up that uh, tick over. The one hand, I don't know if I can do it. Not long enough. No, oh, it's got a long screwdriver. There it is. You always need one of these for you setting yourself up in you go when do you reckon Richard? Yeah. Yeah, alright yeah. right. we have it a little bit more because it's auto
Right, there you go, looking sounding nice. Okay, it's been a busy little week and parts have been coming in to finish the Kryptons off. We had a little bit of work to do on the green GXL, but that's all done. And I'm happy to say, green GXL's been doing some great motorway driving this week, running very nicely. One wheel weight is off, but apart from that, it's not bad. I think the tyres as well on the green GXL had misshaped a little bit in storage, but they, uh, they evened out a little bit. We'll check those tyres, tread's good, but probably better off to swap the tyres over and just rebalance the weights. And whilst all that was going on, for Friday night, the rest of the parts for the Krypton build are in. We are in red. The boom is connected. So Pete's been busy. So boom goes on, boom slots in. Not sure where I filmed off because it's been a few days. You tend to forget. However, the uh, parts are reassembling back into the powder coated Krypton. And we'll hope you're liking the red. Casters arrived, there they are. New casters, new, new dolly wheels, whatever you want to call them. There's the frame, the base frame. And here, is our mat that's arrived, our rubber ribbing mat, so that we can recover. I think I did a bit of a spinal tap here and ordered the wrong sizes. There's plenty there, there's too much. <laughs> there's enough matting to probably do a bench or two and a couple of Kryptons or two. Our pedestal remains over there. Okay, so really what I want to do now is mate everything back up and finalize this build, then slot the control electronics back into the uh, case. Of course, you've still got the original yellow there on that frame, because we didn't go that far and strip that back down. It isn't seen, it's a bit annoying, but it depends how far we wanted to go with this. Uh, we sort of set a level where we wanted it to go. And strictly speaking, if you wanted to go concourse on this, you'd be taking the circuit boards off, dipping the circuit boards in a solution which cleans all the dust off them. You'd be taking that tube down, cleaning the glass so it's all like brand new. It's how far you want to go and what you actually want to do. We could always get another one and go for it. This is a bit of a, a learning curve too on this Friday night video. So I'll start by just setting out these casters into the um, frame there, the, the dolly base frame. And then we can fit the pedestal on and lift this up and get it bolted onto the, uh, the pedestal so that you've got a complete mobile unit. Then we can slot in the electronics and fire it back up. I've got to refit the drawers. I told them not to powder coat those rails. It won't affect it. I've tried them and they still slide. Be a bit stiff, I suppose. Probably could just put a blade and scrape the top layer of paint off. Sometimes powder coat, it was a fast service. Probably didn't make it quite clear enough to the guy in the booth not to spray those runners, but it's uh, a minor detail. Once the dolly wheels are on here, then we'll probably put the rubber matting on. I'll knock that dent out. Do you see that dent? I'll knock that out. Rubber mat goes on there, we'll cut round. We use a two-part epoxy spray glue, rubber mat, and then there's little squares of rubber mat just to place inside each little sliding drawer of the unit. I've kept all the original pieces on the squares, so we just use those as the templates to cut out on our mat over there. First thing I'll do though is just make sure that these casters do what we want. They've got to be a recessed fit into the receptacles here. I'll show you what I mean. We need to be sort of flush fitting in there at the moment. These bolts are probably going to be proud. They're not an exact like for like, but uh, 17 quid for four was a good deal considering some people wanted 20 quid a wheel. Keep hunting on eBay and eventually you find. Okay. This did come with some little recessed nuts, like collars that slot into there. Slot into there. I'll just see if they fit this stud thread, this bolt thread pitch. I might not have to reuse those, although there was one missing. Minor detail, we can always weld in. I know we've had it powder coated, but we didn't know what we were gonna, wheels we were going to be getting. We could always weld in. 
if we wanted to. Peach City at Cortina City, rebuilding the 335 motorscope then, continuing on and multitasking with Tina G, the green car, and also keeping the other fleet, the other cars in the fleet going, and at the same time beginning the strip down of the, um, the 62 motorscope over there. We're going to dip that. We're not going to shock blast it. We're going to dip it. Reason? The gentle shock blasting guys that I've got with the low power shock blaster, it won't fit in his cabinet. The industrial guys I used for this, I did notice it's quite aggressive. Although it hasn't rippled any of this casing, it did put a, a, a curve into this plate and that's quite thick metal. You can just see it's coming down now. It's okay though once it bolts up, <clears throat> but you've got to be careful with your shock blaster. A good one of solid steel and good uh, box section, you'll be all right. But on, on, on smaller parts, thinner metal and large sort of large unre un unreinforced panels, the shock blaster can warp it with the heat and the impact of kinetic energy there. So you've got to be careful. And that's the reason why. For this, we're going to be a bit more gentle and present it to the powder coaters already stripped. So we'll dip this in the uh, phosphoric. They'll bake off all the old paint. We've managed to find powder coat silver. So that'll be good. So we're all okay. PC will now get these bolts on and we'll build up this caster dolly base. Let's go. Okay, we're mocking up the wheels for the base, took the bolts off, ground them with the, the grinding wheel there on the Makita, just took the edges off the nut and then prepped the frame area and knocked the nuts quite tightly into these sockets here. Now we're going to just weld a little bit around each of the nuts just to secure them but that should help and that showed me the wheels will screw into this base now the new wheels have adapted to fit in so they'll just screw into those can you see that yes you can so we should get all four casters onto the frame but i just we'll have to weld the nuts even though they're a tight interference fit here in these tubes they will over time try and break them nuts out so just gonna put some tacks on each one so ground a little bit of powder coating off just there so that when the welder comes in, it's going to bite. Then that means all four caster wheels will screw to this. And then have a mobile base plate. So I'll go next door where the welder is. And just uh, pop a little bit of weld on these. I'll be right back. Okay, the nuts are ground down, welded on. In you come, a little bit of primer on them, keep the rust at bay. I'd have gone completely crazy on it. So just welded in them captives, then took them back with a grinder, and these wheels will bolt straight in like this now, and we're ready to go. They should be. Whoa! <laughs> they should be steady and sturdy. They won't come off them. I'll screw all four in. Flip it, drip it, and get the rubber matting onto this next. So that needs the uh, spray epoxy glue, like what they used on the Blues Brothers to stick the accelerator pedal down on the uh, Bob's Country Bunker bus. The good old boys. We're the, we're the good old boys. You're the good old boys. Okay, this is glue. Strong stuff. Woo! Right, you come into your screens now. Let's test it out. The dolly is done. A bit of alliteration there. The dolly is done. 
Aye, ah, yeah. ah, the dolly's done. Yeah, and it's nice and level and stable. Let me offer it up to you. I've just had a crash on it. Doing a bit of a jackass. I'm Pete C from Cortina City. This is Krypton riding. Right, a dolly is there. Can you see at home? The dolly is done. Right, so now, just seeing if that's level and it is. All seems good. Yeah. Okay. It's time to put the vinyl, the rubber matting on this base lid. Here's the base lid. That's going to be going on there. But first, we'll get the rubber mat glued on. So it's a bit of spray glue time. Trim this in. So if you're going to do this, if you're going to do a Krypton yourself, you're doing the matting carpet tape type knife. It's good for this. You can just get around. I'm just cutting around the pedestal now. So you just find a little edge because the pedestal sits just over this raised section. So just use that edge to guide you and cut the square out neatly. So I'll get on and cut that out neat. And then this pedestal, of course, we've shown it you many times on this. Will bolt onto there and this whole assembly then bolts onto the, the dolly. When we're on the dolly I can then lift this and bolt that on to the whole thing. We should be getting to a point where we can finish this final assembly of this now. So I'll get on with this carpet cutting knife and just trim round the rest of that. So that's the two part epoxy glue Contact adhesive, better known as. Okay. Okay, so base goes onto the, the dolly with these 10 mil nylocks. Some new washers. I couldn't find any new nylocks. The old ones are okay. Snip those up. You've got to just make sure if you're going in for powder coating to cover all the threads. These weren't covered. I think they charge more. They've got to do stuff like that. I just use a wire wheel, wire brush to take the powder coat off the threads and then some PTFE spray, some GT40 to help break the threads back in. Got to be careful, you don't want to be snapping the studs, we're okay. GT40 just lubes them up because you still have traces of paint on there. It's very hard to get it all removed. We're okay. Last one here. Okay, I've got the unit just on the side a little bit. I've got a 13 inside. I had a 13 inside to lock the inner locking bolts. Again, I've got to do is get a decent miniature tripod for this camera. So I haven't got one. Make shots like this. Hard work with a the camera. There we go. So we're nipping up them four 
pedestal bolts and we can flip it up and then we're on our wheels we're on our pedestal there we can put the top base cabinet sorry that one you can put the top cabinet on to the base that's almost all the bolting up done krypton coming on good okay to make life easier oh put the pedestal on its back then lift the unit across which is a lot easier than trying to tilt it or squat lift it rather on and up to the pedestal so I'm just going to put some securing bolts in the back and flip it up and then properly put them in because at the moment I've not got washers on let's grab a 13 I can see the 13 there scoop under and get it we should be able to flip this up while you remain seated. <laughs> the boom tried to hook me upside down. Wow, that's crazy. The, uh, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. the boom tried to hook me upside down. It kind of like got under my arm and uh, <laughs> flipped me up. Whoa, right, okay. There you go. So, our first time looking back like a machine, we just got to put those skewing bolts and washers in the back now. That made life easier. The fact that uh, we laid it all back and then used leverage to flip it up. Else I would have been having to try and, I could have got someone in to help. But where is everybody? Where is everybody? Where is everybody? So, all we got to do now, Place these one at a time. Now it's under its own weight. These will land in the right position. Assuming that they've not got any powder coating in. They have, they have plugged these, so these ones haven't got. But they still are a little bit, just slightly out of line. Loosen it. No. I cracked. I'm going to throw with, with bolts on this. They're okay. Right, one washer finally on. Do it all the way. Go grab another nut and washer. Well, I was going to dump it up opposite corner, but it doesn't like it. 
Keep the powder coat made slightly out of line. You know what I mean? So, three more to go. We're just tightening these up. Three more to go. Okay, the powder coating hasn't affected the rails. Lock and load. You're good to go. A little bit of spray grease on. And they're on. And they'll lock into the drawer. So, ha, you couldn't make it up. The players are jamming the wheel up. Wow, so that takes us there everybody. We can offer up the drawer here now and hopefully line it up and lock it in. Should go, I think I can lift that. I've managed to lift it out on my own. I'll put you on a tripod so you can watch me struggle. I think I've got a P-clip to tighten up in here. I think that's it. I think you can push the drawer back in and carry on with the rest of the rubber mat. So there's a rubber mat in each drawer here. Talking of drawers, there is a drawer that opens and closes. There's a sticker to get for that. Mark, Mark Free is doing that. And yeah, I think that's it. Might be easier to connect the earth harness up now. There's earth harnesses here, so perhaps we'll install the harness. It'll be easier to get to the earth in bolts right away. One of them connects to the earthing tag down there and the other one goes up to the cabinet I believe linking them together makes sense because you've got to earth your cabinet so this one goes up and earths the cabinet itself on the p-clip bolt I think I shall refer to photographs for that but the drawers are done you do have to take one of the pins out to slide these out so you can get your it all taken apart for powder coating. These drawer runners weren't powder coated. There's nothing wrong with them. They're very easy to disassemble. Just a sir clip there and the pin comes out. Make a note which way round they go. It's, it locks in to a little slot under tension with a pin there. And the idea is you, you draw out for servicing the chassis and it locks in place. And it's locked and it won't keep trying to slide back as you're working on it so that's a locking system for servicing so earth wires on and then i'll put you back on tripod we'll lift the drawer slot it in start connecting up the harness okay this should be it should be able to... i hope i can do this i don't see why not should work should be able to squat lift this. Yeah, it's not that heavy. <laughs> the wheels are rolling away. Wow. Whoa! That's what I'm talking. That's what I'm talking about. We got a locked in Krypton, everybody. Let's just make sure though, otherwise that. Is going straight on the floor. Oh, we're going straight out of the way. Let's check, check, and double check. Ooh, little cable we found inside. Oh no, that was was that what I was using to pull on something? Okay, it's nothing to do with this machine. Right, double check that everything's locked up. Yeah, I can't see that's all counterbalance. That's obviously designed for that. That's locked in. There's nothing, everybody, to stop us. I think we won't do any harm to use our briefs just on here with me as well. So I just used that white grease on the runner. Sorry, I stepped in front of the camera there. 
don't see why not. I don't see why it's not. Right, what I'm going to do is now is, is very lightly clean just around these edges and then I'll, I'll, I'll pop it in and slide it into the machine, okay? I think that's it. So a little bit of a clean up just around the uh, chassis area. Then we push back and hook up the wiring connections and make sure that it's still working. Okay, so turn that radio down. We're ready. Ready, willing, and able to slide the scope where it belongs. Okay, so just squeeze in the two clips and push. I should just go straight in. <laughs> it's going on its own! Wow, you see that? Yeah. And then it hits the second point. Please tell me I've done that right. It's the second point where there you have to now, yes, you've got to now push up. Oh, the boom hit me in the end. What a disaster. You've got to now press up on the second lot of clips to get it past. And that's where we find out where we've gone wrong. I can't remember how you do. Do them other clips and just push up. I'll do it from the back. One clip goes. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know how you do this. I might have done it wrong. I think I have. Guys, I think I got it wrong. There's no way past. Wow, there's no way past. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, I haven't. No, you let this go. You let this go. I think I got something all right. Yeah. Panic is over. I think that's it. I think it goes all the way in. I hope. Doesn't look like it. it looks like we've got a problem. Houston, we have a problem. We missed it on the last gone at the last turn, but not no how that comes all the way back. Don't know. Should keep going. I knew these drawers would get me. I knew they'd get me. What have you got wrong? The drawers everything seems to work. The drawers are fitted at the back first. That bit works. Unless it's hitting the cabinet. Could be hitting the cabinet somewhere. I don't think so though. I'm gonna to have to assess the draw situation. I don't know exactly how you lock it back in. I took it all to bits. And uh I'll have to get another plaster, ouch. Something doesn't allow that to go in. We need to investigate the draw, but I'll be right back. I wasn't doing anything wrong folks, I'll show you what I did. It does fit, the drawers are correct. See your Allen key bolt at the back locks the drawer in. As I turn that Allen key, it bolts the drawer in so the drawer's secured. And that then closes us up. And you can see the face of that is now drawing into the casing. I'm just turning that by hand nice and smooth. That's what was wrong. Everything does fit. There it goes. I've been getting Alan Key and just put that in properly. That's it. 
That's all you have to do. So then we can connect the lights into the little socket there. And obviously I will bring the draw back out now I know what I'm doing and connect the harness in when it's halfway out. And then we can go on about our business and do the rubber mats for the draw and compartments for the instruments here. I'll show you the instruments in coat coated, the casings are done. Just got to put some nice new Phillips screw heads in that, in the vacuum analyzer, clean the front, we'll get a toothbrush now and clean the fronts. They'll be ready, but they will have rubber mat in here and I've kept them to use as the templates, there they are. So there's the mats to use. So we'll just get on and mark out and then we'll use, whoops, we'll use, I mean these are all right, but we might as well just put the new rubber in. There's nothing wrong with these. A bit grubby, they would have cleaned up. But we'll put the new matting on. Four of those, there's one little one at the back of the pedestal, just here inside there. That was burned out. We forgot to take that out when the powder coat was did that got melted, but it's easy just to cut one. So our units coming together all the time. I've cleaned up the crop clip leads as well and give them a little clean up. One more lead to clean in the sink, that's this one. Get that cleaned up in the sink, the ohms lead there. Can clean up those cables, so they're nice. And that's that. Then we'll power up and connect it to the uh, green cortina, I think, and see if we get any anything we can uh, decipher. I think the green car is probably. The best one to connect it to at the moment simply because i've not gone to town tuning that it's on points as well so we'll be able to see the dwell angle hopefully and get some use out of this machine so we're coming together quite nicely let's see where we can get i'm gonna have a little break for dinner now it's dinner time folks we'll resume after a bite to eat Put up some mats. See you soon. Okay, I'm doing the harness connections now, everybody. Peg that harness through there. We've got to do these plugs. They are labelled up, so it is just a case of plugging and playing. This one in first, this one goes out here first. That one into there. Nice and easy, nice and easy does it every time. Nice and easy does it. Nice and easy, nice and easy. And RF connections then, that is the harness there. We've got the strobe light to connect. It's not a big deal. In you go. PC cord, senior city. Just bring it down a little bit. I'll point down there. There you go. There you go. Right, so okay. Fire. On to the Earth Tags Shake Proof Washer. Shake Proof Washer on. Little. 8 mil driver for the nut and then the earth. It's also connected to the casing as well now. So earth continuity throughout. We can if we want switch on and just see if we're still in the game. So we'll take you across, change your angle of view. Nip that up there. Whoa, it goes, there goes the glue. There goes the glue. Oh, it's not the glue. We've done all the rubber mats. I'll bring you down, come and have a look what we're done and what we're doing. We're going to finish this. Coming at you now. It's selfie stick time, Pete City. Come on in, we flip you now, we hit the flip button. Flip, boom! Flip down and round you go in a seamless take. So, plugs are on. Just going to nip this ground lead up before we forget. 
what do we do with our socket? Let's go and have a look. Also the mat, so that's that bottom mat. A nice little drawer here that goes in with its lovely new liner. And then these mats in here for the documents and here for the instruments to, to lie on. And that's about it for cutting up bits of rubber matting. Did quite well with rubber matting, plenty left. Some leads here, which I'm just refurbing the best that I can. I'll just give them a wash down then a lacquer just to try and shiny them up a bit. Then we're just going to satin black the uh, the wires and tidy up the leads. I've done one set here, just tidied up the plugs, cleaned the plugs carefully and just a little light dust in a satin black. About the best I could think of just to really give the cables a fresher look. So we'll do these two. It's all going to start looking quite nice there when we start getting the colour back in everything. Got two little hooks at the back here for wrapping a cable round. Could be for spare leads or it could be for vac tubing. So this, they've got to go on. Mustn't forget those. They're here. I was struggling with them actually last time we spoke. These because I couldn't work out how they went in. Not going to be that way. Ah, uh, I've got it. No, I haven't got it. Well, I just cannot work out what that slot's for. There. I don't... My brain has got a problem. <laughs> I can't work out how these, these go. Uh, there's a slot. So it's got to feed into the slot, surely. I just... Don't tell me they go from the inside. No. The screws... They're screwed from the inside. No! That means I won't be able to get to the screws. And the screws pop out, do they? Which means this is in the way. Uh-oh. 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 We're going to have to fit them on the outside and not use the slots. Hey, is that right? I'll have to confer with the photographs. Please don't tell me that. Uh, that would fit there, but you, that would fit there like that. And the threads are on this side, so they can't. You can't screw from. No, you can't screw from the inside. That's good. Good news. I just don't know why how they've done it. Maybe they just like that. And these slots aren't intended to do this. We'll see. A decal to go on up on the other side. Just re-adhesive these, that's all. There's no particular trick. I just cleaned them up and new sticky for that. That's that on. That's our docking station for the cables. And then we had no problem with anything. The earth cable went on, TV hook up points on and then these instruments down there, the vac gauge, clean the face of that up, quickly clean the face of the scope controller up, like that, that's really ready for testing now, we can put our documents going here, there's just a drawer runners, two plastic drawer runners, here they are, they've got self adhesive on them, hang on, those they stick here and the drawer slides in. Drawer is in. So we need some adhesive on the back of them. And then that's it. We can slide the drawer in. The drawer's got its rubber liner on. I think everything's ready for testing now. That's how it is with the Krypton. Oh, I was doing this, wasn't at the back. Well, I think this is how these hooks go. They don't go through this hole. I don't know what that hole is for, but they don't go through that there's no way they could work you just screw straight on that's it for the back the strobe light wants colouring in red we need to get a two pack red mix done for that for the strobe light and pointing it there it is so and then tidy the cable up for the strobe light it's very sort of chomped up and damaged so we need a new duct in here, really heavy duty stuff, it's not like my normal flex this. It's pretty kind of heavy duty sheathing. We have to try and source some of that. 
I'm sure we will. Okay, I'm going to power this up and see what we get. See if it still works. Okay, we're making the final finishing touches. Let's just make sure our trusty camera base tracks. Yes, it does. Just checking, just checking. Yes, working. That's a handy feature. Right, back panel's going on. New, nice new screws for these back panels, everybody. Okay. They're all on, snip these up now. All the cables are in. We've got a mat down in there. The only thing I've not done, and probably won't make it on this, this video, but that really wants colour coding into the red now. So I'd imagine we could probably just yeah, it looks like it comes apart in two half sections. It'd be a case of uh, prepping this plastic and getting a two pack red mix in a rattle can, something two pack hard wearing, and we'll paint that. I'll get that paint ordered. For the time being, we'll put the gun, well, it can go in its holster. Whoa! It can go in its holster for now. I didn't want it to spoil the effect of the machine because of the colour clash. London calling, London calling. We've got those hooks on there as you saw. This, these handy cable loops there. And again, a, a larger one there, probably for the back hose, as I mentioned. And so on and so on. So what you do, we've got a power cable. There's a power cable. Yes, power cable. So we can switch on now. I have checked it. It did boot up. So, but what I wanted to do was just get everything running. And then put the back panels on. Oh, we've got one more thing to do, everybody. We've got the uh, seal on the plate to nicely rivet on there. Do you want to stay on while I get the rivets? That's up to you. Hello, can I hear you? I'll leave you running and just talk amongst yourselves for a second. Let's go and get the rivets. And then we shall rivet. Rivet and go. I think you've got a set of rivets here. There should be. Let's see if the camera picks me back up. Is it that good? I'm just the camera has a face track feature. Although well, quite right. You want to track my face? I don't know. Although well, my face is as good as yours. Someone said to me, uh, they've not seen me, you know, they've not seen me. Someone not seen me for, oh God, how long was it now? Um, for about five years or something like that, you know. And they said, oh, look, you look a bit older. I thought, well, you've got a time machine. So do you. <laughs> like they hadn't got old and I just had. Like their whole world had stayed still. And Pete sees the only one who ages. What a load of crap. Absolute bullshit. <laughs> there we go, we've got the rivets. We've got the brains, we've got the bronze. Let's make lots of money. Oh, they are the wrong size rivets. Oh, oh, it's not right, that restoration, that Krypton thing he's done. Oh, they are the wrong size rivets, have you seen it? What he's done there, the wrong size rivets. The wrong, wrong size rivets. Well, they actually were wrong size rivets. What a great thing. Aye, 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 aye. aye. You were, that one was the wrong size. I'll let you off. Aye, aye, aye. What do you think it goes? Well, aye, yeah, yeah. You don't like that. Aye, aye, What do you think it What are wrong rivets? Well, that wrong, that wrong rivets, they were. He gone on there and uh, he put the uh, he put right wrong rivets on that side. He put right wrong rivet. He put the right wrong rivets on that one. What the hell? Aye, 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 yeah. What the hell? Well, have we got right rivets? Terry, what? You got rate reverse. 
Well, I think so. We're running, we're running low. Low, 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 low. We're just about have enough. We might have to just send our friendly drill in just because the lady loves milk tray there. And we haven't got a drill bit for that. Here's another rivet. These are right. That one's wrong. Take that one out. We don't want that one in. Gonna go off and get a drill bit. This one take. Yeah, and I got it takes me eight. I'm being lazy, it takes me eight to turn the camera off. Boys and girls in YouTube and Patreon. And it takes ages for Pepsi. The bugger about that camera. There you go. There's a little bit of just misalignment. It takes me ages. A peep seat to bugger about with that camera. But our super chatters and our Patreons are still with us. Hardly any Patreons have dropped out. The hardcore Patreons have stayed for the course, which means more videos. And the super chatters means more videos, more projects, more listening to peep seat. Oh, oh, whoops. Whoops, and uh, a fan blade took off my nail, by the way. Actually, I think I'm gonna lose the whole nail. Fan blade hit that one. It was already a bit hurt. Bang, on Tina, a little bite. And um, the nail's gonna separate from the bed, I, I would have thought. That's a gone of that. Ow, that hurt. The whole nail flipped up. Oh, <laughs> tell you what, that made me eyes water. Rivet plate on. Uh, bin tag on with the rivets, rivet plate, bin tags. That's it. Let me put these rivets back in the box. And then we're going to have a tidy up. Then a final showdown and presentation. We'll draw this video to a close. And I think that'll be quite neat because last week, hold on, I'll, before I talk to you, I'll look at the camera. It won't be rude. Let me just put these rivets away. Was it last week we were doing this? Yeah, it was last week, because I, I had footage from last week. A lot happened last week, but it did. It got to one hour 20. Where are you? See, now Face Tracker's lost me. I think Face Tracker might have got me. Has Face Tracker got me? Let's try. No. Crazy thing. Hang on, let me flip you. Flip. And now flip. Here I come up. Having my picture taken for a passport photo. Uh, down. Yes, now face tracker works. Okay, that's better. A bit of compressed air. Just to clean up that rivet dust. Never get compressed air near your ears. Hello? I'm over here. No, it's like it's lost the plot. I think it likes it. It's like a, I don't think it likes it when I wonder if you can force it to retract. Yes, I've worked out how you do that now. I'm learning this camera all the time. They're very good the DG, DJI cameras. Are we gonna flip to you for the demo? Will the cable reach? No, it won't. Hold on. Hang on a sec. It's a shame that cable doesn't reach. It's a shame that you just disappear off. That's crazy. Who wants to feel my feet? See, it's got limitations. How about that? We'll flip to you then, this piece of the camera. Bring the machine into your line of sight. Plug in. And we're good to go. Yep, that looks framed and nice. So here we have it then. Our controls here. I've moved this control box to the left hand side. It was when I got the machine on the right. I think that was incorrect. To me, instinctively, this pad control box should have been underneath the um, screen, not on the right hand side. Someone's put that there. I don't think it's right. Let me just get my nose. I don't think that's right. So. 
What have we got there? Bit of a clean up on this panel. I'm going to just get a toothbrush in here and finish it off. We're back where we were with our traces. So, not a lot going on. Just tell you from there, from down, from there. That's our. Um, uh, that's our battery voltage, coils, and all this kind of stuff. We're still running, we're looking good. We get to work out what these twelve buttons do, but I think let's say it's a four-cylinder engine. I think that if you had four traces superimposed and you press this. One of them drops away from the superimposed set of four, so you can isolate out and raise up one of your four cylinder uh, traces. I think that's what they do. Because you can, a lot of the time, on this button here, it will superimpose all four traces together. This one will um, track out and parade. Well, that's called raster. Uh, parade is parade to mat men's mat as well. Parade, yeah, was parade any good? I don't know what the difference was between parade, fiesta, nave, men only. Razzle, let me get a razzle, come on, a razzle. I like a razzle, give me a razzle, a razzle. Give me a nice razzle. Give me a nice razzle. Razzle's the best. Razzle any day, razzle. Fiesta, no, razzle. White house, yeah, white house. Yeah, so you would get this parade of uh, traces here, which is that way, and then the raster is laid out that way. The raster always comes down that way. Parade goes across. Anyway, that's when we get it connected to the car. We all seem to be functioning all right. I've put these manuals here. So we've got all the, the data, tune-up data books, back to 77, 78. Ooh. 74, that's a nice early one. I like that one. 81, 80, so 74 is the closest to Cortina land we're going to get. I like the way they do the digits here, very space age. So we go Cortina, Ford, Ford DB, but well thumbed page, Cortina page, well thumbed. In fact, you could actually tr track if the person had a criminal record, you could work out who it is. That's assuming they have the fingerprint taken, which they probably would have done. So if the owner of this has been naughty, we could find out who the fuck, well, not necessarily the owner, of course, could a garage employee. Ford Cortina, Capri, Ca Capri, the car you always promised yourself. Cortina, Escort, Cortina and Capri, Escort, Razzle, Escort. Okay, so let's say Cortina 2 litre, Cortina and Capri 2 litre GT. Cortina and Capri 1600 overhead cam. Cortina and Capri 2 litre GT, 1993 CC. Any information? Distributor, Motorcraft, contact gap, 0 0.022. Well, this is going to be, that's not going to be um, Imperial. Well, 0 0.6 for the contact gap, no? Oh, in millimetres, there you go. Yeah, 0 0.56 mil. Dwell, 38 to 40, yes, that's right. Then your then you centrifugal starts, vacuum and round starts in HGs. Spark plugs, your gaps, no, again 0 0.6, spark plug gap, all the same on, well, all the same on the 1300, same on the 2 litres. Carburetor, coil, resistance in ohms, 1.3 to 1.6, battery capacities in amperage, start a lock draw, alternator output, 14 volts target. So really there's not a mega amount of data in them. But they're there anyway, and really having all these books here like this is no real particular advantage because you know there's only really you know one page you're going to be looking at the same throughout all those books. So really, for me, effectively putting them there isn't really any use. 
I'd be better off with the Haynes man. In fact, I'll get a Haynes manual because we're going to dress this shot a little bit. Put a Haynes manual in. I think that, you know, the two litre overhead cam Haynes manual should really be there too. And that's what's good about this little drawer. I think, like, you, maybe the, be the best book is Auto Data, which I have got. Uh, I think Auto Data is a bit better than Haynes. So that looks nice like that, doesn't it? And then, should we put the 74? Put a couple in like that. So look, a nice book goes in that. It looks good, doesn't it? We're just dressing it now. We'll do the rest. And then we need the Krypton manual, but I haven't got that. Uh, no, we haven't got <clears throat> the Krypton manual. Didn't we have somebody who just talking off camera? Apologies for being rude. Yeah, we've got some Krypton books. But that is 1964, so really that's a use. Could do with something a bit more relevant, really. There are some larger books. You know what the difference is between this is an earlier book, Krypton Triangle, before they went to TI. My year of birth, 69. But really, you know, it's not the right thing to have in there. Nice books that they can be, they can be for the other Krypton machines. This one, we just need something. I thought it came with some books. I thought it came with a manual. Okay, let's not worry about that too much. But yeah, you put that there like that. It's starting to look nice now, isn't it? You know, here's that boom, and the boom's set up good. The cables have been referred to. Swing the boom round. We've got everything there. This end here, I'm going to put a, a, a multi-plug on this. This is for connecting to the coil. Now on the Cortina, um, you need you, to measure the coil resistance and to measure the, um, what should I say, the, uh, the uh, contact break uh, dwell angle. You need to get onto the posts of the coil. But to have the engine running, you still need the wires on. So there's no kind of the crock clips won't let you get under the coil with the plugs still on. So you can put the crock clips on, but then you can't put the plugs on, so you can't start the car. So we need to make some kind of device that will go round the posts of the coil, and then you can, so it's gonna have to be like a slim line, then the, then the, you know, the connectors can go on on top of that. So I don't want to solder crock clips to the end of this lead because it won't be effectively no use. We need to put a multi-plug on it, and then you can have an adapter on, the multi-plug with slimline connectors. We're gonna to have to come up with something which will slide onto a, a, a post of a coil, but grip it. Now you could have, say, an eyelet, a ring eyelet, but it'd have to be a really good fit and different size ring eyelet because one post is slightly larger diameter. Um, or you could solder these just right in a, like a hook loop and push them on. But, or you could have some kind of spring system. We need to make something which which allows it to grip the post rather than just be dangling because if, if it's not quite a tight fit, you're going to get false readings. It's going to have to be really secure. The other way you could have done it was to build a connector into the harness of the car. But I don't think that's a good idea. We need to make a quick connector for the end of this. Apart from that cable, everything's good to go. So you can just nicely hook everything up there like that. So I've cleaned up the cables the best that I can. These little cable marker indicators here are a little bit... I think a Chinook's going over. Can you hear that Chinook? Or is it? No, it's not a Chinook. It's not, it's not whopping, whopping enough. Can't see. Full moon, by the way. If you want to calculate that out, the 25th of Feb it is today. A full moon. 23rd of Feb was somebody's birthday, I remember. A lot of people said, 23rd of Feb, were you born on the 23rd of Feb? And the 24th was mine yesterday. Okay, so we have got everything. I think that looks quite nice. Shall we call it a day? I'll take you for a walk around. There was the boom. There were the cables. Well, I'll tell you what. Whoops, what was that? 
I've said it's only these canes. <gasps> God, I've jumped in. This one actually needs a clean up. That's supposed to be green. This one needs to go in the sink. We'll take that into the house now and give that a clean up. They call that cable B315. I don't know what it's for. 316 scope module B316. 315 cable, I don't know what it's for, but it, it does go into the scope input there. So this must be for a separate connection to the car. But I don't know what, we need to find out what is cable B315 for. That's an exercise for us, someone out there might know. Other than that, put that there. Now you might notice, of course, if you've been watching closely, that the boom on this model, other than the colour, it's a... Uh, it's different, it's red and the boom is shorter. And I like the boom being shorter because it means it's, um, it's not gonna catch anything. If I put it in the far corner there, it might have made it as it was. I just find it a bit more compact, I don't mind it. Well, the other reason was that, remember the tube was bent and you couldn't really salvage the tube, the only way was to slice out and drop it down, which worked, we had to move the collar here. This stop collar here allows it to go so far and then locks it. So I can get back here, there, and it locks. See, see, it stops it rotating. I mean, the main, the main reason for that locking of the boom would be so you couldn't do a 360 and twist the cables. Of course, it's, otherwise you'd start to wind up your cables, and eventually, you know, mechanic after mechanic, you end up ripping your cables. So that's why it locks more than anything else. I think perhaps I could have done the collar whereby. It locks just there, would have been nicer. It doesn't, it locks over there. But it really should have locked there, I think. So that really was something I should have spotted. I think I did try and line it up, you know, somewhere somewhere in the mix, I lost it. So, because it has a sort of interlocking collar, but we'll have to live with that one. Pete's not perfect, I'm afraid. Let's see if the strobe gun fires, it should do. Although I think it only fires when the engine's running actually. I don't think you can get a, a signal out of that yet. I thought you could to be fair. So we lost the strobe, we lost the gun. I did think that this fired. I was sure that it did. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. Might need the engine. Yeah, you can need the engine, it's got no trigger, has it? I suppose it doesn't look that bad in yellow and gun. It'll look crazy. But it doesn't match the scheme. So what do you think then? Let's just bring it up a little bit. What do you think? The crypto machine is there. We turned it around in a week. This is Cortina C. I'm quite pleased on the face of it. I've just used some um, some back to black stuff on the, I'll bring you in, I'll, I'll, I'll wheel it into the screen on the vinyl there, it'll probably fade out that. Coming a bit closer to you. How's that? A bit better? Yeah, so you can see the crack in that perspex there, look. We could get that recut. And the screen looks like it's running well. I've still to learn some of the functions here. I believe that this is two and four stroke button here. Uh, still not quite sure that uh, two to 12 select. I think that's to knock out a cylinder, to isolate a cylinder, but you think there's the zero button. It does alter the line. I wonder if that's, I don't know. I don't know what that is. This, I think it's a set to move the position of the trace. I can understand the resistance buttons. I can understand most of these buttons. But, uh, but for buttons, we could do with just getting some of the tarnish off those dials there. We need to supply a piece of vac tube for this. So we need a new, nice new old stock piece of vac tube. I have got some, oh, some over here. Hold on, let's get this. Nice piece of back line for it. I suppose really 
they make it so that this isn't normally connected. Let's see if that's running. Not tried this. Come on out there. Oh yeah, there we go. That was stuck down, that needle, until I opened this. The little foul bit. Not sure about that one. There is a book for this. You, like, you can wind pressure into this. The whole reason for that is I don't know. Because, <clears throat> I wonder if you, when you wind the pressure, it's relative to be blocking that tube. I don't think it is there. Why would I why would I have pressure wind up? Answers on a postcard, please. I'm not a mechanic. And we've got we can wind pressure up. Hang on, that gauge was open. Oh there we go. It's more sensitive. Basically that's the more sensitive. But I don't know what you'd have this for. You wind in and then you can wind all the way back out. I know it's a piston inside because I saw it earlier on. Hold up, bring it down. I know it's a piston inside because I saw it earlier on. So you can, you can sort of do that for some reason, but why? I don't know. Let's just have a look at that again. And that one slowly falls away. Now, as that one stays constant, but this one will slowly fall. It's very sensitive. That's going to be a nice handy tool. That's going to help us a lot. So, when you've done your vac, do you just leave that here, then coil it up around the back? I don't know how they want you to do that. As long as I can coil up on this at the back, these uh, cable coil things. But do you leave it set? like that you know doesn't look as neat does it but it's there it is there well what remains to do now then is tidy everything up in here we're not too messy but tidy everything up all tools back clean the floor down and then bring in the car we'll bring in the green car probably and hook it to this. We should have all the cables that we need to do that. I think we have. And see, it wouldn't make any sense of it. It'd be interesting to have a car on that uh, runs on point. I could do really with solving that one. That's a job that if you don't do it now, you'll never do it. That multi plug onto there and then make the adapter. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a Molex on that. And then on the other end of the Molex, I'll have. The adapter and then you could always have different molexes with different one could have crop clips on one could have eyelets depending on what you were doing so or if you want a different type of car so the cortina plug would be for the cortina coils the lucas not lucas um bosch no well many people made the coils to be fair but large pillar and small pillar type coil some have spades on some of the same size pillars some you know lucars uh, but on Cortina, it's a slightly wider diameter on the B plus connector, and then the uh, CB connector, I think, is the smaller diameter. So that needs sorting because that's an important thing to be checking. These cables, like I said, I gave them a dusting with some bumper black paint. It's going to hold out, it just makes them look a bit fresher. It could be a few little finer tunes. There's, there's some hooks here. Behind all other stuff. As you saw, we put the decals onto the boom. The tube was all right, didn't need a plate, it didn't look burned. And that's about it, really. It's missing a power switch here. I think we'll be able to find who makes these and get a power switch. 
But I'm anxious to, well, I'm eager, not anxious, I'm eager to get it hooked up to the car and give you some interesting live footage of this running. I know that you saw it sort of half going when we, were, when we repaired it. I did notice that there's a capacitor blown in the control box in the two one in the three one six scope module. Um, I think it looked again like a decoupling capacitor. Why it would have blown, I don't know. Again, a tantalum bead decoupling cap just blown off the board. Um, that may affect the, uh, the the running of the scope in terms of interference because the decoupling cap is for making your power line smooth. If you get a spike in your power line, the capacitor will pass it through to ground and, and wipe it out. So it's a, that's a decoupling cap to do with keeping electrical noise down. But that's blown on that board in here. It's an easy job to fix. It will not affect today's test with the green Cortina with Tina G, we don't know. But I'm going to wind the video down with Tina G connected to this, but it's going to take me half an hour to clear the workshop because I can't do it in a mess. And then, after we've done that, we can start stripping down the 1962 units. I've already made a start, as you can see, early on in this film, but it'd be nice to get that part. We're going to get it dipped, as I said, because of the sandblasting problem. Then we'll reopen the electronics bench for next week's film, where you'll see me build the torque converter lockup time circuit, and also continue on with the strip down. And we may, just to keep you interested, put some new caps and valves onto the, the, the Junior scope, 62 Junior, and see if we can get that scope coming to life. Because that's the hardest job, is uh, the scopes. Well, it might not be when I look at the way the gauges work, but I know there's a lot of work to do on those in terms of capacitors and valves. There's not many discrete components on there. Um, there might be a slender rectifier, not sure. Uh, Transformers are going to be okay, say valves, caps, rectifier, uh, some resistors that might be, especially the high ohmage ones, maybe open circuit or out of tolerance. Pretty easy stuff to do. So really, it could be quite an interesting um, video to have the, the senior all shipped off for dipping and the junior back on the bench and at the same time on the tech vid we can be making that speed control circuit. And in the same vid, we try and throw some Cortina Mark III stuff in for you as well. Of course, with a lockdown, it's hard for me to get out on the road. Um, I have been doing some road trips, but not getting out of the car, just to be respectful. Whereas I'd like to be getting out going to Dave's Yard. There's been some stuff in at Dave's Yard, but not gone up there because it's, I could argue it, but I've got plenty of other things to do. This has kept me busy and out of the way. Once the uh, the uh, virus comes down a bit, things will get easier for us all. Hopefully, make some shows. So yeah, we're doing okay. I'll walk you around this before I tidy the workshop, and then I will tidy the workshop and get the car hooked up. See you in a sec. Let's go for a walk around. Okay. And there you have the 335 all put back together. Let's move that little bit of tube, with the exception of the timing gun. Trust me that I'll do it. We have done our work. If I do do another, I will do it in yellow to sell on. Or I'll take an order if you want me to build you one. Let me know if you've got one, bring it in. Charge 500 for a refurb. So you have to let me know. Plus the powder coating. And I can rebuild you one. Or, most of you are perfectly capable of doing what I've just done, using this as a guide. I won't do circuit board repairs unless they're brought to the bench. And it's, uh, I'd have to work out a price for that. If you've got one and it's faulty, you want me to repair it, I'd have to negotiate something, but I've got to be clearing at least 30 quid an hour, so I've got a living to make, I'm afraid. But that's the score. Okay, this is it. Hope you enjoyed that. And now let's tidy up and hook up.
Tidy up on Hoko, coming up.
just over a thousand, about 1100 RPM, yeah. This one's just a little trim down. You can adjust that then. That's good. Okay, we're going to switch off. We're finished for the day. That's not bad. Car runs good as well. A couple of little squeaks, but it's not bad. Right, we can shut down. You can see the trace just goes to a straight line. And that's that. The machine. Well, it's a good, uh, a good result. If we run out of time. Uh, thank you all as we wind down now let's just check our voltage again yeah it drops down battery's good 13.7 that battery has been on this car for years and i always had it on trickle charge and it saved it never had to worry it's the wrong battery funnily enough it's too small for the car but by trickle charging it it saved it so the leads go back up we're done for the day so thanks everybody, I'm just hook the leads there, no I won't, I'll clip them back up. Thanks for the views, the comments and uh, any super chats that might have come in, appreciate them. Hope you enjoyed this Krypton rebuild with Pete C, we'll see you next Friday for some more fun. Probably be on with these junior and senior on 1962 models, workshop's a bit tidier now, Tina G in. Been doing some quite a bit of work as old Tina. She needs uh, she needs some TLC as you saw, but you know, it's an old battle cruiser. Catch you next Friday, folks. PC is going out uh, and hope you enjoyed that. We've brought it to a conclusion and we didn't hang around. Catch you soon. Job well done. Over and out and good night. See you next week. Hiya, hiya, welcome to my Friday night chat, aha, a little bit, hang on a minute, this ain't gonna work, I can't get any speed up. Hiya, oh, whoa, <laughs> whoops, ready for, ready for blast off, the dolly is ready, can we get blast off? Uh, no, I, I can't do it. Uh, it's right. Ah! Uh, um, the ant hill, no.